Hey everybody, so in my last video I introduced you to the uh, ABUS 83 series. This is the uh, 83IC40. Um, actually it's the aluminum version of that, so it's the 83ALIC40. Uh, so it's slightly narrower than uh, the last one I showed you, but this one takes a uh, small format interchangeable core uh, lock cylinders. Uh, and I'm going to try to pick it uh, because this is pretty tricky, so I want to make sure that I get this through before I talk a bit more about how uh, interchangeable core cylinders actually work. So we're going to use a very thin uh, hook and a standard piece and pry bar because while this keyway is very wide, so that original pry bar does fit very nicely, um, it does have a very significant curve in here and anything thicker than this just drags horribly and I can never get this thing open with those. So let's just work down the pin stack starting from the back and we're going to just be trying to push up very lightly, find the binder and just hope that we get a little click when we push up because uh, no matter what these locks have a minimum of two shear lines, but unlike a master keyed lock, you can't mix and match shear lines to get them open. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you why uh, after this. But uh, so if you accidentally set even one pin too high to the or or too low to the wrong uh, shear line you'll never get this open no matter what you do. It really doesn't matter. So, we're going to just keep going. This is a six pin cylinder, so uh, there's plenty of difficulty here. And now they best does not normally use uh, security pins uh, in part because of uh, the difficulty of dealing with the two separate shear lines already but uh, I believe they have recently started offering as, as a uh, more special item uh, some pick resistant pins. And there we go, we've got an open. It's a bit of a heavy throw, but we've got that. So uh, let's take a look at how these things actually work. Now, this is an 83 cylinder uh, or body. I have it set up. Uh, to be key retaining currently, so even if I snap that back. So, it's all locked up now. So how do we get in? Well, I have the keys here. So first, we're going to take a look at the, uh, the operator key, or the change key, it's sometimes called. Just stick that in there, twist, and just like any normal lock, nothing special. Uh, the only things that are a bit unusual about it is the fact that it is tip stopped. Uh, and so if we compare it to this uh, Yale key that I have here, you can see the Yale key has this very pronounced uh, what they call a shoulder. Uh, and the tip is just this wedge here because the tip doesn't actually have to hit anything. So when we stick it into the Yale cylinder that it goes to, it just goes all the way in until it hits this shoulder. An SFIC key, or any, or just about any uh, interchangeable core key, is usually tip stopped. It does have an open back, but it has this little uh, lip on the side that that step uh, butts up against to stop the key when it is hit the right point. And one of the advantages of this is that you can use the same key uh, in five, six, and seven pin locks as long as uh, you know you just don't have as many cuts or you don't use as many of the cuts in the smaller locks. Uh, right, so here is a uh, interchangeable core and this is the control key and if you notice it has this little cam 
or tab uh, that sticks out. That's what keeps it locked into the lock housing. So when we insert this key, and focus, come on, there we go, focus. So when we insert this key and turn it, you'll see that that cam is rotated out of the way and the core could now be pulled out of the lock body. Then you just lock that back up, pull it out, and you set it aside. Now, here we've got the control key inserted, pop it out, and there is the tailpiece, which we remove, and we're just going to put that on the back of the other core. Lock this back up, set it aside, put the control key into the core that we want to put in. Uh, undo that, open up that uh, chaining shackle or tab, get it seated in there, and now it's all locked up and our operator key will keep working the lock as it should. Uh, how does all this work? Well, these are the pin stacks that are inside. And you'll see that everyone has, has uh, three pins. A key pin, uh, a middle pin, which on another lock would be the mastering uh, pin or wafer, and then the driver. Sometimes it's called the build-up pin. Uh, there's a lot of very interesting stuff about how uh, about the rules for pinning these up, but uh, even I don't have the best grasp on that. And why do we need uh, all of these extra pins? Well, because this is the way the lock is constructed. You have the body, which contains uh, the Bible or the top of the spring stacks like you'd get in any normal lock. And we have the core, which holds the key pins, has the keyway, and connects to the tailpiece. All perfectly normal. But they add in this sleeve, which is what the uh, little retaining cam is part of. So the way it's built is the plug inserts into the sleeve so that the holes will line up. And all that goes inside the body. So it actually is constructed by inserting the sleeve into the body and then the plug into that. And then there's normally this uh, brass plate that I had to cut off uh, holding the whole thing together. But so the, the plug can turn independently of the sleeve and the sleeve can turn with the uh, plug still locked into the sleeve. And that's why you have those uh, three different pins. One allows you to rotate just the plug. The middle one uh, makes the difference between, or rather, you have the key pins, the uh, control pins, and the driver or build-up pins. And that creates two different shear lines, one which will match up with the sleeve and one which will match up with the plug. So when you have keys with two even very slightly different cuts, they will match the shear lines differently. Now these can still be mastered and it gets incredibly complex just like any uh, large mastering system. Uh, but that's about it, and I'm starting to ramble. So, until next time, uh, have fun, and happy picking.